for this particular row this entire thing is reduced to only one row let's look at this row right this is going to be interesting so that is why row number five is not going to be populated here hey guys welcome back to our channel this channel every data science is all about trying to learn various concepts of data science by practicing a lot of questions this video is in continuation of the sql 50 crack sql into 50 question series where we are trying to learn hands-on sql using 50 carefully created questions covering diverse aspects of sql so we are already done with the select part basic joins basic aggregate functions sorting and grouping and advanced select and joins and with this video we will be done with subqueries as well and then we'll be moving to advanced string functions regex and clauses in this video we are going to solve this question called department top three salaries and try to learn from it so yeah let's jump right in okay so this is the 43rd video of the series called department top three salaries and if i look at the companies this question has been asked in so microsoft and google a number of times in last couple of years so very important question and also this is a hard category let's look at what the question has to say uh, we are given a table called employee with four different columns id name salary and department id id is the primary key that is column with unique values for this table department id is a foreign key that is a reference column of the id from the department table each row of this table indicates the id name and salary of an employee it also contains the id of their department we are also given a second table called department with two different columns id and name and id in this case is a primary key for this table each row of this table indicates the id of the department and its name now a company's executives are interested in seeing who earns the most money in each of the company's departments a high earner in a department is an employee who has a salary in the top three unique salaries for that department we are asked to write a solution to find the employees who are high earners in each of the departments so people with top three unique salaries in each department order of the result does not matter okay let's go through this example and see what we need in our output so here we have various employees their salaries and department id and we have a department table which determines okay what is the name of that particular department okay so if we go by department id one so department id one we have five different employees joe max janet randy and will and let's look at who all have the top three highest unique salaries so the highest salary is max 90,000 then the second highest is 85,000 but 85,000 is for two people Randy and Joe so in our output for department ID 1 we should have 90,000 and max 85,000 Randy 85,000 Joe and the third highest is Will that is 70,000 now for department ID 2 there are only two employees and these two are in the top three obviously so that is what we have in our output if we look at so it we have max joe randy and will and sales henry and sam okay so now this question can be done in two ways firstly which is an easier method is using a window function what we can do is we can for every department id arrange by salary in decreasing manner and rank them okay so this is assigned rank one then eighty five thousand is assigned rank two and then the seventy thousand is assigned rank three and so on similarly for department id two rank one and rank two but there is another way to do this since we are learning about sub queries it is called a correlated sub query we are going to solve this question using correlated subquery but firstly i will go ahead and and explain you what a correlated subquery is and how exactly it runs it is very confusing for people to understand initially i will try to give you line by line demonstration to show actually what is happening okay so since in our output we ne need the department name and employee and salary so department name is in a department table and employee table has the name and salary of the employee so the first thing that we should do is firstly we should join these two tables so that we have the desired columns so from this table called employee and let me go ahead and alias this as even let me left to join the department table aliased as d on even dot department id is equal to d dot id it's return all the columns let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output so here if i look at it so now i have a table where these four columns are coming from employee table and these two are coming from the department table actually we do not need this id table so what we can do is we can just simply keep even dot star and then d dot name as well okay so now once we have this then what we can do is this becomes our outer query so for correlated subqueries there are two things that you should 
keep in mind firstly there is a outer query and then there is an inner query and a correlated sub query works from outer to inner query and i'm going to demonstrate that as well like actually what is happening okay so now let me switch to excel and try to you know recapture what we have done so far so here we have the employee table which was e1 that we aliased and this is the department table we joined on department id of e1 and id of department and then this is the table that we got okay so now this becomes our outer query now what we need to do is see the logic is exactly same as what you are going to use in the window function but here we are just doing it in a very different manner out of these right so if you look at this out, out right so this is the uh, result of what we have from our join right and if you look at our output our output is of that right of that we are only keeping the top three unique salaries people in every department so basically it is about in from this join we are only going to keep certain rows and we are excluding other rows now how a filter is being working okay so let me okay so from this we have this then what we are doing is from this we are going to keep certain rows now where so since we need to filter we write where okay now we need to write the inner query let me just write it and then i will explain how it is actually keeping the top three unique values so the inner query is on the employee table with but it is an another version of employee table we are doing where even dot department id is equal to e2 dot department id department id and e1 dot salary is less than e2 dot salary and in these cases what you do is you return count of distinct e2 dot salary and this entire thing should be less than three okay now i know that like this might sound very confusing but like let me just go ahead and demonstrate what actually is happening so firstly how are you able to identify this is a correlated sub query here this query this is the inner query right this is the inner query and here you are using something from the outer part as well so here you have from employee as e2 you are using e1 right so e1 is from outer part the department id and making sure that it is equal to e2 dot department id and e1 dot salary again using from the outer query and comparing with someone something else okay so what actually is happening let me switch to excel okay so this is what we got from the join right this thing and this is what we have written so count of distinct e2 salary from employee e2 where e1 dot department id is equal to e2 dot department id and e1 dot salary is less than e2 dot salary and this entire thing should be less than three okay what actually is happening is for every row in the outer query it goes and checks for all the rows in inner query and just by this statement you might be thinking that actually this correlated sub queries are actually not a very optimized solution because think about this here you only have seven rows but what if you had million rows and let's say you have hundred thousand rows in this so for every row it is going to check hundred thousand times and one million multiplied by hundred thousand times this query is going to run so obviously it is not an optimized solution but we are just trying to learn how it is working so what i mean when i say for every row in the outer query it is going to check all the rows in the inner part so here it says okay let's say this is the first row that it took now should i keep these row or not because if you just go ahead right so here out of this so this is what we have from the joint now we are performing a filtering where we are trying to see whether we are going to keep certain rows or not and how we are going to determine whether we are going to keep those rows or not this is using a correlated subquery now what it does is okay so you have id name salary department id and name now it says even dot department id this one is even right so even dot department id is equal to e2 dot department id right so let me just okay so here what it says is okay is your even dot department id equal to e2 dot department id here yes so let me just write it yes here then is even dot department id equal to 
E2 dot department ID for row number two. No. Similarly for this, no. And then yes, 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 and yes. Okay. Now there is another condition and E1 dot salary is less than E2 dot salary. E1 dot salary is the E1 dot salary less than E2 dot salary. No. So here we would be having no. Is E1 dot salary less than E2 dot salary? No. So again, no no and similarly if i go ahead and populate this okay so this is what it will have now to decide whether this row should be kept or not firstly it went and tried to find okay what is the condition with the department id and what is the condition with the salary and once we had that then we are only left with one row in this inner part e right so this one where we have yes and yes for this particular row this entire thing is reduced to only one row and then what we are doing is we are counting distinct e2 dot salary what is the distinct value only one right so 90000 is that less than 3 right so count is going to be one so one is less than 3 yes so finally you keep this row did you see that like what happened let me just just copy this entire thing here so that it's easier for us so okay after round one we are left with this okay now let's go ahead and go to row two okay now row two is this whether this should be kept or not okay here it firstly it's this even dot department id let me just you know delete these parts so that it's easier okay now round two e even dot department id is this equal to this no then yes yes no 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 and no okay secondly is this even dot salary less than e2 dot salary yes right so for first row yes and then no and so on so let me just go ahead and populate this okay so here we do not have any single row where we have two yes so what is this being reduced to for row number two nothing right and if it is nothing and you remember the property of count that if you count star it is going to give you all the rows but if you count a particular column then it is going to give you non-null unique values how many non-null unique values are there if this entire thing is reduced to nothing there is zero non-null unique values and is zero less than three yes so that is why this part is also going to be kept right so here if i just write it here so row number two is populated now same with row number three what will happen in this case what will this be let me just quickly you know go ahead and populate this and see what it happens so for row number three this is what we have and we only have one row where we have yeses so this entire thing for row number three is reduced to this and what is the total count of distinct salary one one is less than three so yes this row will also be kept okay now here we have okay now this is populated now let's look at this one row number four what will this look like so for row number four four we have these ones again there is no single row where we have two yeses so this entire thing is nothing and if you count non-null unique values it is going to be zero and zero is less than three so you keep this row as well copy this here paste it here right so so you see how this query is working and you know keeping certain rows now let's look at this row right this is going to be interesting so five right so here let me just remove this part okay so for this one it is yes yes it is no so now here we have how many rows do you have here one two three four right so you have four rows so you have one salary 85,000 90,000 85,000 and 70,000 so you have four salaries but if you count distinct what is the value three why 85,000 85,000 is a repetition so you count it as one then there is 90,000 so two and 70,000 is three now is three less than three 
No. So that is why row number five is not going to be populated here. Similarly, if you go ahead with six and seven, it is going to keep that. So here, if I just go ahead and, you know, let me know if you are not able to understand this part. But yeah, so this is going to be in our output finally. So now if you look at it, this is exactly the same thing that we got in our final output right so you have max joe randy will and then henry sam here max joe randy will and then henry sam so you see this is what we get and the only thing remaining to do is in our output we only need certain names so what we can do is firstly we name the name of the department so we can write d dot name as department then we need the employee name employee name is in even right so we can write even dot name as employee and then we need the third part is salary so we can do even dot salary as salary okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output if i go ahead and scroll up okay so this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it so it passes all the test cases okay so this is accepted as well and this is how we do it okay so right so you see this is not a very efficient method but this is how we do this using a correlated subquery two things to know about subqueries firstly there is an outer part right so this entire thing is an outer query and then this entire thing is an inner query and secondly inner query uses some values from the outer query and that is why this is a correlated query if you just simply run this part this query it is not going to run so you have to have an outer query and secondly it always takes from outer to inner and that is how it runs so yeah let this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or a more efficient way or if you have any question regarding this let the solution be in the comment section below and i will see you guys in the next video